Welcome to Google I.O. For someone like me who grew up without a phone, I can distinctly remember how gaining access to technology can make a difference in your lives. That's why we've been so focused on bringing digital skills to communities around the world. We have trained over 25 million people, and we expect that number to rise over 60 million in the next five years. Healthcare is one of the most important fields AI is going to transform. We announced our work on diabetic retinopathy, and we use deep learning to help doctors diagnose it. We can predict the five-year risk of you having an adverse cardiovascular event, heart attack or strokes. We've been working with our partners using de-identified medical records. It turns out if you go and analyze over 100,000 data points per patient, more than any single doctor could analyze, we can actually quantitatively predict the chance of readmission 24 to 48 hours earlier than traditional methods. It gives doctors more time to act. We are bringing another feature to Gmail, Smart Compose. We use machine learning to start suggesting phrases for you as you type. All you need to do is to hit tab and keep auto-completing. Another product is Google Photos. So we are bringing a new feature. If you took a picture of a document which you want to save for later, we can recognize, convert the document to PDF, and make it much easier for you to use later. Or if you happen to have a very special memory, something in black and white, we can recreate that moment in color and make that moment even more real and special. And we are adding, as of today, six new voices to the Google Assistant. John Legend's voice will be coming later this year so that you can get responses like this. At 10 a.m., you have an event called Google I.O. Keynote. Then, at 1 p.m., you have margaritas. Have a wonderful day. I'm looking forward to 1 p.m. Today, the Assistant is available on over 500 million devices. Now, by the end of this year, the Assistant will support 30 languages and be available in 80 countries. But one step that we've been working on is something we call Pretty Please. Hey, Google, talk to Voicetron. Daddy, you forgot to say please. Tell me a story, please. Thanks for asking so nicely. You're very polite. I know. So the assistant understands and responds to positive conversation with polite reinforcement. Now, sometimes the assistant can actually be more helpful by having a lower visual profile. So let's say I'm heading home from work. I have Google Maps showing me the fastest route during rush hour traffic. Hey, Google, send Nick my ETA and play some hip hop. OK, letting Nick know you're 20 minutes away and check out this hip hop music station on YouTube. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. That was a real call you just heard. The amazing thing is the assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. I'm really excited to announce the new Google News. With the new Google News, we set out to help you do three things. First, keep up with the news you care about. Second, understand the full story. And finally, enjoy and support the sources you love. Our AI constantly reads the firehose of the web for you, the millions of articles, videos, podcasts, and comments being published every minute and assembles the key things you need to know. We're also excited to introduce a new visual format we call Newscasts. You are not going to see these in any other news app. Newscasts give me an easy way to get the basics and decide where I want to dive in more deeply. Full coverage is an invitation to learn more. It gives a complete picture of a story in terms of how it's being reported from a variety of sources and in a variety of formats. This is by far the most powerful feature of the app. And here in the newsstand section, it's easy to find and follow the sources I already love and browse and discover new ones. 
And if there's a publication I want to subscribe to, we make it dead simple. Because you're signed in with your Google account, you're set. We're rolling out on Android, iOS, and the web in 127 countries starting today. Growth of Android over the last 10 years has helped fuel the shift in computing from desktop to mobile. And as Sundar mentioned, AI is going to profoundly change industries. And this brings me to the new version of Android we're working on, Android P. Adaptive Battery uses on-device machine learning to figure out which apps you'll use in the next few hours and which you won't use until later, if at all, today. With Android P, we're going beyond simply predicting the next app to launch to predicting the next action you want to take. We call this feature App Actions. What's happening here is that the actions are being predicted based on my usage patterns. The phone is adapting to me and trying to help me get to my next task more quickly. Slices are a new API for developers to define interactive snippets of their app UI that can be surfaced in different places in the OS. With MLKit, you get on-device APIs to text recognition, face detection, image labeling, and a lot more. And MLKit also supports the ability to tap into Google's cloud-based ML technologies. Our team has heard so many stories from people who are trying to find the right balance with technology. One of the first things we focused on was helping you understand your habits. Android P will show you a dashboard of how you're spending time on your device. As you saw earlier, you can see how much time you spent in apps, how many times you've unlocked your device today, and how many notifications you've received. Android P lets you set time limits on apps and will nudge you when you're close to your limit that it's time to do something else. If you turn your phone over on the table, it automatically enters Do Not Disturb, so you can focus on being present. No pings, vibrations, or other distractions. You can tell the Google Assistant what time you aim to go to bed, and when that time arrives, it will switch on Do Not Disturb and fade the screen to grayscale, which is far less stimulating for the brain and can help you set the phone down. Well, today, we're announcing Android P Beta. Maps was built to assist everyone. We've mapped over 220 countries and territories and put hundreds of millions of businesses and places on the map. We're adding a new tab to Maps called For You. It's designed to tell you what you need to know about the neighborhoods you care about, new places that are opening, what's trending now, and personal recommendations. We've created a score called Your Match to help you find more places that you'll love. Your Match uses machine learning to combine what Google knows about hundreds of millions of places with the information that I've added. Let me paint a familiar picture. The phone says, head south on Market Street. One problem, you have no idea which way is south. So you look down at the phone, you're looking at that blue dot on the map, and you're starting to walk to see if it's moving in the same direction. Our teams have been working really hard to combine the power of the camera, the computer vision, with street view and maps to reimagine walking navigation. So here's how it could look like in Google Maps. Notice that you also see the map, so that way you stay oriented. You can start to see nearby places, so you see what's around you. Now, with smart text selection, you can now connect the words you see with the answers and actions you need. So you can do things like copy and paste from the real world directly into your phone. You're at your friend's place. You check out this trendy-looking lamp. And you want to know things that match that style. And now Lens can help you. You open the camera, and you start to see Lens surface proactively all the information instantly. And it even anchors that information to the things that you see. Waymo is the only company in the world with a fleet of fully self-driving cars with no one in the driver's seat on public roads. So Phoenix will be the first stop for Waymo's driverless transportation service, which is launching later this year. Soon, everyone will be able to call Waymo using our app, and a fully self-driving car will pull up with no one in the driver's seat to whisk them away to their destination. I hope you all find some inspiration in the next few days to keep building good things for everyone. Thank you. This came to my attention. We restored the natural laws of physics so all is well, we can get back to business.